Hi guys. So um, we're still talking about power series. We're still talking about Taylor and McLaurin series in this video. But what we're going to see now is that there is another way to find the power series or the Taylor series expansion for a function other than just taking the derivatives and trying to find a pattern. And that way is by manipulating power series that we already know. So that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at manipulating power series. And so I have that sine x still up there because last class we determined that the Taylor series associated with sine x, or rather the Maclaurin series, since it's centered at zero, is n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n over two n plus one factorial times x to the two n plus one. So let's say that I wanted to use that to find a Taylor series expansion for x sine x. So find the McLaurin series for x sine x. f of x is equal to x sine x. Well, it's actually really, really, really straightforward because x is just a polynomial. So I'm just multiplying by something that's not going to change the fact that this thing is a polynomial. So in other words, if I'm looking at x sine x, I can say that's equal to x times the sum n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, two n plus one factorial, x to the two n plus one. But then this x right here, I can bring it inside and see that therefore this is the sum n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n over two n plus one factorial, times x to the two in plus two. And that is actually my final answer. So knowing the Taylor series, knowing the McLaurin series for sine x made it really easy to find x sine x. Now another series that we've seen that we know the expansion for is one over one minus x. So let's remember one divided by one minus x is equal to the sum n equals zero to infinity x to the n. Now this is something that we showed way back when we first developed the idea of a power series. We could show it again right now by saying, hey look, x to the power of n, that's a geometric series. What is my a, what is my r? Recognizing that this starts at zero, and we'll see that this thing converges to one over one minus x for x values that are between negative one and one. Okay, so now we're gonna use this to try to find a couple other power series. So an example of this might be find the McLaurin series, and we'll just say for the following functions. So the first one that we will look at here, A, is f of x is equal to 1 over 2 plus x. So we noticed when we did sine x that sine x was there, and then I just multiplied it by x. So the question is, how can I think of 1 over 2 plus x as something times 1 over 1 minus x? Well, the first problem that we have here is that 2. In the known series, I have 1 over 1 minus x. So we're going to deal with that 2 first. I'm going to say that 1 over 2 plus x is equal to 1 over 2 times 1 plus x over 2. Good. Now the next issue here, so I can see that this is 1 half times one over one plus x over two. Meaning that the next problem that I have comes from the fact that this isn't one minus a variable, this is one plus a thing. So the plus here is our problem. So then I can think of this as one half times one over one minus negative x over two. And suddenly, this is in the form of my known series. It's just that instead of having an x, 
I have a negative x over 2. Plus, I have this extra 1 half out front that I am multiplying by. So since I know what 1 over 1 minus x is, I can say that 1 over 2 plus x is equal to 1 half, that 1 half we multiplied out front, and equals 0 to infinity. Instead of x, I have negative x over 2 to the power of n. So then I can look at this, if I wanted to simplify this, as n equals 0 to infinity, that 2 to the n in the denominator, I'm going to combine this 2 right here with it. Also, this negative right here means that this is alternating. So I'm going to move the alternating bit out to the front, negative 1 to the n. I have an x to the n on the top. And then I have 2 to the n plus 1 because, again, of that extra 2 right there that I brought to the inside. So then this is my final answer. Okay, so now we have f of x is equal to 6 over 1 plus x cubed. We want to go through the same process here. So I'll have 6 over 1 plus x cubed. Good news, that's a 1 right there, so we don't have to deal with any, like, factoring things out. So here the issue is my x cubed. So I have 6 times 1 over 1 plus x cubed. I've moved that 6 to the outside. Now we have an x cubed instead of an x, but I also have a plus sign here. So then this becomes 6 times 1 over 1 minus negative x cubed. So now I have that this will be the sum n equals 0 to infinity. I have that 6 right there, and then I have a negative x cubed instead of an x. Now I'm going to simplify this thing in the same way that I simplified the last one, and then I'm going to bring that negative one to the n out so that we have our alternating part separated from the rest. And this will give me the sum n equals 0 to infinity, 6 times negative 1 to the power of n times x to the 3n. And that's my final answer there. So you'll see that it goes, it's entirely about multiplying by whatever's necessary and manipulating the thing to look like the original series. So I'm going to do one more with sine, and then I think that you'll pretty much have this figured out. So the next one that we're going to look at, our c here, is f of x is equal to x squared sine of 3x. Okay. So what that means, x squared sine of 3x is equal to x squared times the sum n equals 0 to infinity. Now I have my power series for sine, but instead of having an x in there, I'm going to have a 3x. So I have negative 1 to the power of n, 3x to the 2n plus 1, all divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. So instead of writing x in there, I just wrote 3x. Now, notice we still have that x on the outside there. So I want to bring it inside. So therefore, I'm going to also separate that 3 out. Oops, I'm still highlighting. So then this is equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the power of n, 3 to the 2n plus 1, x no longer 2n plus 1, it's 2n plus 1 plus 2, so this will be x to the 2n plus 3, all over 2n plus 1 factorial. And that gives me my final answer. And you can imagine, when you think of what the derivative of x squared of sine 3 times sine 3x is going to look like, you're going to have a product rule. And then you're going to have another product rule and another, and it's just going to kind of get gross. So trying to find a pattern in those derivatives might be quite difficult. But recognizing that this is just some polynomial times sine of another function allows us to do this much more simply. So if you were given a power series for anything else as well, we can always manipulate that to try to make it look like things that we already know. Um, anyway, this is just another way that we can find a series expansion for a function. That's all. Bye, guys.